were I, who to my cost already am one of those strange, prodigious creatures, man a spirit free to choose for my own share what sort of flesh and blood I please to wear, I'd be a dog, a monkey, or a bear, or anything but that vain animal, who is so proud of being rational his senses are too gross, and he'll contrive a sixth, to contradict the other five, and before certain instinct will prefer reason, which fifty times for one does err, reason, an ignus fatuous of the mind, which leaving light of nature, sense, behind, pathless and dangerous wandering ways it takes, through errors fenny bogs and thorny breaks, whilst the misguided follower climbs with pain mountains of whimsies, heaped in his own brain, stumbling from thought to thought, falls headlong down, into doubt's boundless sea where, like to drown, books bear him up a while, and make him try to swim with bladders of philosophy, in hopes still to overtake the escaping light, the vapour dances, in his dancing sight, till spent, it leaves him to eternal night then old age and experience, hand in hand, lead him to death, make him to understand, after a search so painful, and so long, that all his life he has been in the wrong huddled in debt the reasoning engine lies, who was so proud, so witty, and so wise, pride drew him in, as cheats their bubbles catch, and made him venture, to be made a wretch his wisdom did his happiness destroy, aiming to know that world he should enjoy, and wit was his vain, frivolous pretense of pleasing others, at his own expense for wits are treated just like common whores, first they're enjoyed, and then kicked out of doors, the pleasure past, a threatening doubt remains, that frights th enjoy with succeeding pains women and men of wit are dangerous tools, and ever fatal to admiring fools pleasure allures, and when the fops escape, tis not that they're beloved, but fortunate, and therefore what they fear, at heart they hate but now, methinks some formal band and beard takes me to task, come on sir, I'm prepared, then by your favour, anything that's writ against this jibing, jingling knack called wit likes me abundantly, but you take care upon this point not to be too severe perhaps my muse were fitter for this part, for I profess I can be very smart on wit, which I abhor with all my heart, I long to lash it in some sharp essay, but your grand indiscretion bids me stay, and turns my tide of ink another way, what rage torments in your degenerate mind, to make you rail at reason, and mankind blessed glorious man, to whom alone kind heaven an everlasting soul hath freely given, whom his great maker took such care to make, that from himself he did the image take, and this fair frame in shining reason dressed, to dignify his nature above beast reason, by whose aspiring influence we take a flight beyond material sense, dive into mysteries, then soaring pierce the flaming limits of the universe, search heaven and hell, find out what's acted there, and give the world true grounds of hope and fear. Hold mighty man, I cry, all this we know, from the pathetic pen of Ingelo, from Petrarch's pilgrim, Sib's soliloquies, and tis this very reason I despise, this supernatural gift that makes a might think he's an image of the infinite, comparing his short life void of all rest, to the eternal, and the ever blessed, this busy, pushing stirrer up of doubt, that frames deep mysteries, then finds them out, filling with frantic crowds of thinking fools the reverend bedlams, colleges and schools, born on whose wings each heavy sot can pierce the limits of the boundless universe, so charming ointments make an old witch fly, and bear a crippled carcass through the sky. Tis the exalted power whose business lies in nonsense and impossibilities this made a whimsical philosopher before the spacious world his tub prefer, and we have modern cloistered coxcombs, who retire to think cause they have naught to do, but thoughts are given for actions government, where action ceases, thoughts impertinent our sphere of action is life's happiness, and he that thinks beyond thinks like an ass thus, whilst against false reasoning I envy I own right reason, which I would obey that reason which distinguishes by sense, and gives us rules of good and ill from thence, that bounds desires, with a reforming will to keep them more in vigour, not to kill, your reason hinders, mine helps to enjoy, renewing appetites yours would destroy my reason is my friend, yours is a cheat, hunger calls out, 
my reason bids me eat, perversely. Yours your appetite does mock this asks for food, that answers. What o'clock these plain distinction, sir, your doubt secures, tis not true reason I despise, but yours thus I think reason righted, but for man, I'll ne'er recant, defend him if you can for all his pride, and his philosophy, tis evident, beasts are in their own degree as wise at least, and better far than he, those creatures are the wisest to attain, by surest means. The ends at which they aim if therefore Jala finds and kills the hares, better than mere supplies committee chairs, though one's a statesman, th other but a hound, Jala in justice would be wiser found you see how far man's wisdom here extends look next if human nature makes amends, whose principles are most generous and just, and to whose morals you would sooner trust be judge yourself, I'll bring it to the test, which is the basis creature. Man or beast birds feed on birds, beasts on each other prey, but savage man alone does man betray pressed by necessity. They kill for food, man undoes man, to do himself no good, with teeth and claws, by nature armed, they hunt nature's allowance, to supply their want but man, with smiles, embraces, friendships, preys, inhumanely his fellow's life betrays with voluntary pains works his distress, not through necessity, but wantonness for hunger or for love they bite, or tear, while stretched man is still in arms for fear for fear he arms, and is of arms afraid from fear, to fear, successively betrayed, base fear, the source whence his best passions came his boasted honour, and his dear bought fame the lust of power, to whom he's such a slave, and for the which alone he dares be brave, to which his various projects are designed, which makes him generous, affable, and kind for which he takes such pains to be thought wise, and screws his actions, in a forced disguise, leads a most tedious life in misery, under laborious, mean hypocrisy look to the bottom of his vast design, wherein man's wisdom, power, and glory join the good he acts, the ill he does endure. Tis all from fear, to make himself secure merely for safety after fame they thirst, for all men would be cowards if they durst and honesties against all common sense, men must be knaves, tis in their own defence mankind's dishonest, if you think it fair among known cheats to play upon the square, you'll be undone nor can weak truth your reputation save, the knaves will all agree to call you knave, wronged shall he live, insulted door, oppressed, who dares be less a villain than the rest thus sir, you see what human nature craves, most men are cowards, all men should be knaves, the difference lies, as far as I can see not in the thing itself, but the degree, and all the subject matter of debate is only, who's a knave of the first rate all this with indignation have I hurled at the pretending part of the proud world, who, swollen with selfish vanity, devise, false freedoms, holy cheats, and formal lies, over their fellow slaves to tyrannize, but if in court so just a man there be, in court, a just man, yet unknown to me who does his needful flattery direct not to oppress and ruin, but protect since flattery, which way so ever laid, is still a tax, on that unhappy trade if so upright a statesman you can find, whose passions bent to his unbiased mind, who does his arts and policies apply to raise his country, not his family, nor while his pride owned avarice withstands, receives close bribes, from friends corrupted hands, is there a churchman who on God relies his life, his faith and doctrine justifies not one blown up, with vain prelatic pride, who for reproofs of sins does man deride, whose envious heart makes preaching a pretense with his obstreperous, saucy eloquence, to chide at kings, and rail at men of sense, who from his pulpit vents more peevish lies, more bitter ailings, scandals, calumnies, than at a gossiping are thrown about when the good wives get drunk, and then fall out none of that sensual tribe, whose talents lie in avarice, pride, sloth, and gluttony, who hunt good livings, but abhor good lives, whose lust exalted, to that height arrives, they act adultery with their own wives and dare a score of years completed be, can from the loftiest pulpit proudly see, half a large parish their own progeny nor doting bishop, who would be adored for domineering at the council board, 
a great of bop, in business at fourscore, fonder of serious toys, affected more, than the gay, glittering fool at twenty proves, with all his noise, his tawdry clothes and loves, but a meek, humble man, of honest sense, who preaching peace does practice continence, whose pious life's a proof he does believe mysterious truths which no man can conceive if upon earth there dwell such godlike men, I'll here recant my paradox to them, adores those shrines of virtue, homage pay, and with the rabble world their laws obey if such there are, yet grant me this at least, man differs more from man than man from beast.